So in this video, I'll continue the discussion on power flow. And again, as I mentioned uh, previously in, in this discussion, I'm not going to go through the detailed derivation, you know, so I'm just going to provide the kind of the equations, just kind of have an appreciation for the complexity of, of, uh, of the power flow, you know. But the derivation is less for and not for other videos. So gas sidle power flow. So basically, we know from kind of showed previously for each load bus, you know, we know S complex power is P plus JQ. Uh, this is real. This is reactive, which is also again these are complex numbers of so V at bus I. So this is at at bus I. So if you think about you have bus I, bus K or J. So this would be like a branch or a line. So at the power that's injected. So think of it as injected at bus I is this kind of equation here. Conjugate, this just means conjugate. So then if you solve for current, current is S divided by V, then P plus JQ divided by V, then if you, if you kind of uh, multiply or take the conjugate of both sides again, so this kind of here goes away because conjugate, conjugate becomes it's kind of like a double negative, you know, negative times negative is plus. That's kind of, so conjugate and conjugate, basically as if there is no conjugate. So you get this equation here. So then basically current injected, so current injected, so cur current injected at bus I, because this bus might have multiple, might be connected to another bus for instance, so another line. You might have another another line. So that's why injected. Then KCL obviously current will branch out. You know, some of it will go through this line, this line, and so on and so forth. So then you get this equation here. So again, if you're right, so if you take all the buses, because again, you have bus I, bus one connected, for instance, to bus two, bus one connected to bus three, bus two connected to bus four, bus four is connected to bus three, and so on and so forth. However, the connection is because the, if you think about the system, power system, is very large, you know, and transmission is so network, you know, distribution might have some networking to a certain extent, but it's it gets very complicated. So then if you write the injected current equations for, so these are the injected currents at each bus. So basically it's just the, so this is kind of vector form. So vector, this is matrix, you know, or the Y bus. Because if you write the equations for each, uh, you will get basically the matrix format. So the injected current at bus I is just this equation here. Basically, you take I1, for instance, is Y11 times V1 plus Y12 times V2, dot, dot, dot. Uh, you go to uh, IN is equal to YNN times VN. So if you write all those and then you write them in summation, you get something like this. Then the injector current is just the summation from k equal 1 to how many buses you have n is the y bus between bus i and k times the voltage at bus k, you know. So again, complex power, we already saw this, then we can write the voltage, complex voltage, or the phasor for voltage at bus I is magnitude VI with an angle, oops, with an angle of, uh, with an angle of uh, delta. So voltage at, 
bus k is magnitude vk with an angle of delta k. For the y bus, it has magnitude of yik with an angle of uh, theta ik. So the y, so ik means it's the impedance between bus i and bus k. If there is a connection, if there is no connection, it's going to be zero. So then if we go back to complex power equation, we already kind of saw this. So if you decompose that into P and Q, basically you take the, for P is just a real part of this here or, or this term here, basically. Then Q is that the imaginary minus I put minus because you have a minus here, imaginary of that term too. So then I kind of color coded them. So you get this term for P, this term for Q. Again, the purpose of this video is not the derivation. It's just kind of just kind of show the equation how complicated and why the power flow cannot solve solve directly. Because if you see here, there is cosine sine. And it should, then you have you have power, so you cannot solve them directly. So if you have n buses, there will be two n, two times n, two times how many buses you have power equations with four n variables because you have voltage, angle, p, q. So two n equations, and you only have, and you have four n variables cannot be solved directly. Because at each time, as we saw previously, you only know out of these f four variables, you only know two n variables. And two n variables are, so two n variables are known, and the other two n variables are unknown. So you can't solve this equation directly. Now, so how, how is your gas cycle handled if you have a PQ? bus basically where you have load so this is a load bus so p is known q is known so so the program will have to solve for voltage and the angle so again this is the voltage equation from the previous slides so r here is just iteration number so like for the current iteration it's one over the Y bus at bus I, anything in, and we'll see how to make up, how to count, calculate that Y I I, uh, because we know P and Q at that at that load bus, and R minus one j just means the previous iteration because you're going to use the previous iteration values to calculate the current iteration values. So basically, here's the equation here R current iteration that you are trying to calculate r minus one is the previous iteration because as you iterate say like you went from one iteration one to two at iteration two you are going to use the voltage at iterate from iteration one which you will plug here in the equation so wherever you see r minus one that means you're going to use the previous iteration value to in the equation. So this equation can be applied twice during the, each iteration. Based because at the when you when the when the power flow starts iterating, voltage here is not known. So voltage is unknown. So what we will do, we will take a guess. We will we know the power system typically is operating at close to one per unit or 100%. So we're going to say V is 1 per, per unit, for instance. Then, so we, for the first iteration, we're going to use this here. Then we're going to iterate another time. So for iteration 1, I'm going to use the guess, what, I get, what, the, what we guess, you know. And this is a setting in the program. You can, you know, if you want to change that. So we use that. But in the next iteration, iteration number two, instead of using what was guessed, use the previous iteration voltage, for instance. In other words, 
when you go through, like, so you're going to go, so in iteration one, you're going to, for voltage, for instance, you're going to use what you, the initial guess. Because when you start the iteration, you, you don't know the voltage at that bus. So initial guess. And that's what you will put in here. And the same thing here. For iteration two, you're going to take whatever you calculated from the previous iteration, and that's what you will plug here. You're not going to use the initial guess. And also here. Now, if you have a PV bus, basically, P is known, v, v is known. And typically, these are like generator buses that are not swing buses. You can have a, a statcom or a capacitor bank, but those P will be zero because they don't, have a, they don't provide any P. So the program will have to calculate Q and the angle. So here's the equation from the <coughs> previous slide for Q. It's the negative of the imaginary of this equation here. So it will go through, it will calculate Q at iteration R. Then it's, it's going to check, check, because if you have a generator, the generator has to operate within Q min and uh, Q max. So it cannot exceed those values. You know, it's by design. So the program will have to check, is my calculated Q within the limits? If the answer is yes, then it calculates. So if Q is smaller rather than instead of like being greater, it's smaller than what it will do it, because it cannot go beyond uh, Q min. So it has then the program will set instead of using the calculated value, it will just set the Q to the Q min of that PV bus. And it will switch PV bus to PV, PQ bus for the rest of the calculations. So in other words, it's going to switch it to a load bus. Also, if Q, if if it calculated Q, if it's if it's Q is nearing Q max, and somehow it's larger than Q max, it's going to set the calculated Q to Q max. Then it will switch PV bus to PQ bus because you have two situations. As it calculates Q, it's either going to be, it might be. If it, it might be either nearing the Q min or Q max. So that's what I mean here. So it's going to check both. Then delta or the angle at the current iteration is just the, because when it calculates the voltage here, because when the program calculates voltage in this, uh, from this equation, it's going to calculate the magnitude and angle. So in this case, it's just going to take the angle of that voltage and using this equation here. Now, if Q that was calculated is within the limits, then, then the P and V were specified for PV, or let's assume generators in this case. However, if Q that was calculated is outside the limits, then the calculated Q will be set to that limit, whether it's Q min or Q max. But the bus will be switched to PQ. Then we, you know, this voltage, normally this bus uh, V is known. However, since it's switched to PQ, now it has to go back and calculate new V because now it's switched from PV to PQ. And it will have to calculate delta or the angle. So for the swing bus and in the gas cycle, the swing bus after solution converges. So after it solves for all the buses, the power flow will go through one more iteration to calculate P and Q for the swing bus. Because for the swing bus, we know voltage is known, a delta or angle is known, but P and Q are unknown. So it will go through and calculate those two. So kind of the equations for both. So here's kind of the procedure. So step one, you need Rx. G typically uh, conductance is typically zero. 
be the shunt susceptance. So if you have like a, a short line, this is kind of the representation. So uh, you only have the series impedance, which is R and X. If you have a medium, what they call a medium line, and there is a definition for that that I can talk about later. So typically, you have the series impedance, which is R plus JX of the line, but then you have the susceptance. So you take the half of the susceptance, put it on one side of the series impedance, the other half on the other side. If it's a long line, then what you do, you take the series impedance and you put half on either side of the susceptance. So susceptance is not is not halved. Swing bus, you don't know P and Q. PQ bus, you don't know V and delta. PV bus, you don't know Q and delta. So these, they have to be calculated by the program or the simulation. Then create the Y bus from the system impedances. So for the diagonal, because you have the Y bus, I guess I have next slide I'll talk about diagonal elements, YII, you sum all of the admittances connected to bus I. Add one half of the line shunt admittance to YII. Uh, Basically, you add this guy here. For the off diagonal elements, YIK, where I is not this equal to K, basically anything that's connected to uh, or the, the branches that are connected that are connected together, then that's the negative, the sum of all admittances connected to bus I and K. If now line is connected between I and K, then that admittance is just zero. Step three, provide initial guesses for all unknown. So for PQ bus, we don't know voltage and delta. We can assume V is one per unit and delta is zero. Then PV bus, we can assume delta is zero. It's just an initial guess. As iterations, like I was saying, iterations go through, instead of using the guess values, guess values, you will use the previous iteration values. So gas cycle, when does the algorithm stop iterating? You one, if max number of iterations is reached, you know, you can tell it stop when you reach 50 iterations. And that's something you can change 100. Obviously it's gonna take more time to, or how, you know, basically once that, that's a setting, you know, you can change. Or the change in voltage from previous iteration R minus one to current iteration R, Voltage mismatch is within specified tolerance. So you can specify that, you know, for instance, 0.001 per unit, for instance. This is just an example. In other words, you take the voltage at bus I from current iteration minus the voltage from the previous iteration at bus I is smaller than 0.01. Again, this is just to give you an idea, basically. So either whichever is reached first, either you reach max iterations first or this tolerance first. That's when the program will stop. You can also uh, have a change in delta, like the delta or the angle from previous from current iteration minus angle from previous iteration within some tolerance, you know, epsilon. So general notations, we know if a bus, for instance, has generation and also load, then we know the injected power at bus, if I call this bus I, so that part, uh, uh, it will be whatever generation is producing minus the load because the load will consume some of that power. That's what I'm writing here. It's just a notation. If bus has no generation, that means this is zero. 
it just has load, then it's negative whatever the load is. It just means uh, the real power is injected at bus I, or is consumed by load, basically. The same thing with Q. It's just a notation. notation. So here's a numerical example. So I have a three bus system here. I believe I got this example from one of the textbooks. I should have mentioned it, but anyway, it's a simple example. So let's say bus one, this is the swing bus. So the voltage is set at one. 0.05 per unit, delta is zero because these are known, but we don't know P and Q. Then PQ bus two. So this here is a load bus basically. It has load. So you can think of it. Load is here. It has some P. It's consuming Q as well. Vars. So P two is negative four. Q two is negative 0.25. Negative just means power is injected. You know per for this notation again don't hopefully it's not confusing it just means load is absorbing or power is is injected that's all it means that's what this negative is means here so we don't know voltage and angle so red will be calculated by the program this is just a PV bus which means it's just a generator in this case so we know P we know voltage we don't know Q and Delta but whatever Q is calculated has to be smaller than 1.5 per unit. So here is the, so between, so this is Z12, this is Z13, this is Z23, impedances basically. So these are the impedances, series impedances. These are the shunt. So for simplicity, we, I assume the, sh uh, the shunt susceptances are assumed zero. Now we have to construct the Y bus. So this will be, I have a three, three bus system. So three bus system, that means it will be a three by three Y bus system. So Y11, one, one, these are the diagonal entries and the other ones are the off diagonal. They are not located on the diagonal. So how do you calculate that? So first, uh, and lowercase here means the admittance, which is one over the impedance, basically. So these are from whatever is given here, these guys here. So if you do the, so if you go through the calculation, you get that value, the same thing here, same thing here. Now, uppercase Y, so how do I construct the first entry, diagonal Y11? I sum up all the admittances connected to bus one. Basically, if I go back to the diagram, I see that bus one is connected to bus two, is also connected to bus three. So I have to add the admittance between bus one and two plus the admittance between bus one and three, whatever is connected to bus one. So that's what you see here plus half of the shunt susceptance of each branch. It just happened to be zero in this case. So for, so this is for the diagonal. For the diagonal, you do the same thing. Basically off diagonal, like a Y12, again, you only take whatever is connected between bus one and two, then you multiply that value by negative one, that's why you see here. And again, this is kind of outlined in the procedure here. Here's diagonal, here's off diagonal. So diagonal, you sum all the admittances connected to bus I, in my case, Y11, anything connected to bus one, then you add half of the line shunt admittance. Off diagonal, you sum all the admittances connected between buses I and K, like between bus one and two, then you multiply by negative one. That's all I'm doing. If there is no connection between two buses, then that entry will be zero. If you take, for instance, uh, in this case, I don't have that case. So 
So basically you calculate all these guys here, then you enter them into the Y bus, then kind of use MATLAB or calculator to calculate the uh, all the entries of that Y bus. So initial ga guess, so for iteration zero or initial iteration, so V zero just means v voltage at bus two with initial guess basically. So we're just assuming one because we have to assume something for the unknowns basically. So bus three is PV, so we have to assume, uh, so for delta, we assume it's zero radians, for instance. You can assume other, anything other than zero if you want. It's, no one is saying you have to assume one here. You can assume 0.9, you know, if you want. It's just the program will take more time because if the, the final result is 1.01, for instance, it's going to take more iterations, or it could even diverge, like it could go in the reverse direction, and the program will end up not solving, basically. So it's always good to start with good guesses. Otherwise, because you have two solutions. One, the program will converge towards the solution, or it could actually go towards the uh, non-solution, diverge, basically, which is not wanted. So now it's going to go through iteration one. Here's the voltage for bus two because it's a load bus. So here's the equation. So for the un, for this the previous iteration, I'm going to since I didn't do any iteration yet, so I'm going to use the gas voltage, which is one per unit here. So the, then you go through, you calculate this voltage. Then for bus three, you calculate Q. So 1.16, which is below 1.5 per unit, so it meets this. So I don't have to set, I don't have to set Q3 1 equal to Q max, you know, of 1.5. Luckily, in this case, I don't have to. Then you go through, you calculate the angle. Then for iteration two, you will do the same thing. I'm just going to show voltage. So this time for voltage, instead of using the initial gas, which is one per unit, I'm going to use the previous iteration, which is voltage, which is this voltage here. So this here will be plugged into here. So then, so you can see that it kind of went down a little bit. So if you iterate more, it's going to keep going until the change is very small. But if you look at the change, it's, it's already like, it's getting smaller. So it's gonna, that means it's going towards the solution basically. So you can see how tedious this is, you know, and luckily uh, computers, you know, they can do that, you know. And, but however, if you have a lot of uh, buses, you know, like a, a large system, like what you have like, 50,000 buses or 100,000 buses, you know, it depends on, so you need like a, a powerful computer, otherwise uh, it could take, it could take some time, you know, to run all the computations, especially if you are, if you add into that like contingency analysis where you outage one, one element, like a, a transmission line or a transformer or a generator at a time, then you solve, or if you do like two things at a time, then you solve, you know, but anyway, so the problem with Gauss-Seidel, as you might expect, any diagonal element of the Y bus, if it's equal to zero, because if you look at from the equations here, you divide by, so one divided by one, three, three, for instance, one divided by one, two, two. So that's one divided by YII. So if that's close, equal to zero or even close to zero, very small, a gas seidel will be undefined then, uh, you know, because you, have, you divide by that yii. So if that's close to zero or it's zero, this will be undefined. And any one diagonal element has too small of magnitude, gas seidel will diverge. In other words, will not solve. 
obviously in a real application like a software, like commercial software, they might uh, tune the program where it recognizes if YI, for instance, let's say is uh, smaller than 0 0.01. I'm just making up a number here. Then set, set that YII to 0 0.01, for instance, instead. Because this way, it will lead to a solution. Again, a solution is better than no solution. But the program with the report, it will tell you in the warning list, hey, you know, just so you know, at bus one or, you know, I had to change the, the value from this value to this value in order to, to solve, you know, otherwise it will diverge, you know. But those are t uh, tunes, you know, that real uh, commercial application softwares, you know, have, you know. So more iterations are required for gas sidle as in number, basically number of buses, you know, increases. So it's going to be very slow. And I think I mentioned in the previous video that a gas sidle, some commercial software, they don't even bother uh, uh, including it in their software, you know, because it's just... It's just uh, not used anymore, rarely used. So that's it for Gossidal. The next uh, video, I'll talk about full new to Thank you.